afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. John Belkowitz, and we've got a Q&A Wednesday. <laughs> we've got a question ding, from Donovan Sexton. Great last name. Wait, what is a sex? Is it a sextant? Is something used in, you know, navigating you ships? No, sextant. That's something that's used like Christopher Columbus used it. Okay. Anyway, as we digress, you want to hear about my personal life? Really? So, Donovan Sexton asks a question. What about, since you guys seem to be reading my mind recently, what about the idea of doing multiple pours with different traits? For instance, about doing layered pours, if you have the time for curing, let's say a two inch more ductile pour with a wire mesh rolled on top and then another super stronger reinforced layer, another wire mesh and then another thin layer with a radiant floor heating system. I sh I'm sure this is mainly not done due to a uh, labor of multiple pours, but it was, um, but if money was, money is no object project, could there be measurable differences to getting multiple benefits from the different types of concrete. Love the channel and thank you for all you do. Hey, Donovan Sexton, you're an awesome person. Thank you for all you do. You're a bright shining star in this universe and we appreciate you. On to the question. Totally, totally, totally would do that. Especially if you're doing something like radiant heat. You want your uh, concrete that's going to hold on to that heat that might be a little bit softer around the radiant heat system but then as you get closer to the surface you might want a concrete that is harder that is tougher that is more resilient to abrasive wear assume that you have a factory that you want to I don't know produce some type of automated manufactured product and it needs to constantly have a flatness rating or a, a, a no gouges nor pitting, and if you use too soft of a concrete, despite the fact that it can hold on to heat, you're gonna wear and tear that surface quickly, then you're gonna have to grind it, then you're gonna have to replace it. So yeah, your idea is absolutely freaking brilliant. But I gotta tell you, it's not your idea, Donovan. You're a brilliant man, but the Romans started using that millennia ago. I mean, look at the Pantheon. As they built up through the Pantheon, and some people even say the Parthenon, as they started going up higher in the levels, or higher in that thing that's called a Cantonary Arch, they started doing two things. One, they started using lighter weight aggregate, more pumice, more volcanic ash that was in larger shapes, that was lighter, more expanded, had more permeability, and of course, because of that lighter. Two, they started using more cutouts, so mechanically, they started taking out sections of concrete where they didn't need it for structural integrity. And the third thing is they started making those pieces up in the higher levels a lot thinner because again, they don't need as much concrete for those non-structural members. So brilliant idea. Folks have been using it for a while, not only for radiant heat flooring, but also from one of the last um, topics we talked about with blast absorbing concrete. I mean, there's a lot of different directions that you can go with it, and if you think about it, what you're trying to create is a composite material, where we just define a composite material as one or two, one, or excuse me, two or more materials used to make up this new whole, uh, or this new material, I should say, um, where we're getting benefits from those two or more materials. Now, taking this to concrete, we've got our cement matrix, which is our hydrated cement matrix, that gray stuff, and then we have our granular skeleton, our rock, our sand, our fibers, and anything else that we want to put in the concrete that's not our binding matrix. Now, if you look at a Hull and Klein definition, they define a composite material as having a matrix which surrounds a stiff and elongated fiber. Extending that to concrete, our matrix is our hydrated cement matrix, that gray stuff, and that stiff and elongated fiber could be our sand and rock. You could do whatever what you want with that definition of a composite material. You don't have to use the individual materials to make it up. You can sandwich them. You can do concretes within concrete. As a matter of fact, when we're looking at recycled concrete, aggregate concrete, that's a composite within a composite that can be used in a composite. How awesome. Mind blown. Great idea, Donovan Sexton. 
Thank you for your question. Hopefully you learned something for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. I'm getting excited. Go Conquering! Be